In this video, we'll fix a tricky issue. This wasn't recording, but it wasn't because of a broken right head. It turns out there's a tiny metal gear that locks and unlocks the right head's ability to lower so you can record. It was missing on this model, so I got it from another broken MZ R700. I got this one cheap because it wouldn't power on. I just had to fix the battery door contact, but it wasn't recording. Let's start by opening the bottom, just four screws. Now we'll pry from the eject button side first. Here I'm pointing to where the gear should be. Time to get underneath. A few more screws to get the board off. Two more at the battery holder. And it starts to separate, but first, a ribbon cable. There. Now we can carefully hinge it open. We don't need to open it any further since we can access the gear's rod from here. There it is. A small motor turns that white gear, which should turn a metal gear that's missing. We'll want to move the rod through the small hole, then attach the gear. There. It's hard to see, but the end of the rod is keyed to keep the gear from spinning. And there's a small lip for a collar to hold the gear in place. Let's fix that eject spring. Push it in until it's held by a small hook. That rod can slip out, so I'm getting it back through the hole.
And here's the little metal gear, taken from a donor. Sorry if I'm a bit off-center, but I was trying to stand up the MZR700 so I could position the gear. My goal was to lay it over the hole, then slide the rod into place, spinning the gear until I had it keyed properly. I've got it through. Now gently spin until you get it keyed on properly. Looks good. Now to put a small circular clip at the end. Unfortunately, I did this part off camera, but I'll show you the result. This is the small clip I'm referring to, and as seen in the manual. It's the same plastic circle clip as on other plastic gears. I used a leftover one. Now that it was on, I just verified it was spinning properly. Try to adjust it so the right head is down. Here's a clip from the broken one to show you how the gear moves the lock for the right head. The gear moves a metal arm that has a raised part on the right side that can block or allow the right head to lower. Before we close it, turn the gear so the right head can lower. Okay, back to reassembly. Just close the two halves like a book and I like to just push this ribbon cable at an angle until it pops through. Now carefully push it in and push the clips to hold it. Next, the bottom cable. Get it in gently and push the clips to lock it in place. Now screw the board back down. Time to close it up. That eject lever hinges freely, so position it down and we'll connect the jack side first. Eject switch is still down. 
Let's line up the jacks. Jacks are good. Let's check the eject switch. All set, just a few more screws. It's fully assembled, but I'm going to take the lid off to show you how the gear helps raise and lower the right head. Loosening four screws lets us keep the lid open to see what's going on. Disc in, and we'll try to test recording. The right head is up during playback. I'll push record and you can see the right head is now right above the disc. I push stop and the right head stays down until the talk is written. And it pops up when writing is finished. Let's do that again. I pushed record and the head is lowered. Now I'll push stop and we'll wait for the talk to finish writing. And it's done. Right head pops up. One last test. This time, let's see the right head lower. Push stop, and it pops up when done. It's all good. Well, this is fun to watch, so we'll do it again. It's functioning normally, so let's actually record some audio to confirm. Here, I'm using a small Iowa mic to record some audio. It was recording just fine. It's fixed. This was an interesting fix because I thought it was the right head that was broken, and it turns out it was just the gear that lowers it. Thanks for watching.